Hi, in this video I'm going to explain to you how to use your CX2 to do pressure altitude and density altitude calculations. Now this is probably just about the easiest thing you can do with your CX2. So as we go through it, I'm going to take the opportunity to uh, also point out some rules of thumb that all pilots should be aware of because you never know, you might not have your CX2 handy. So I've written out the rules of thumb here that you should be aware of. Uh, and the first one is that a one inch change in the altimeter setting will change your pressure altitude by 1,000 feet. Or if you like, a one tenth of an inch uh, change in the altimeter setting will change your pressure altitude by 100 feet. So we're going to check out uh, the accuracy of this rule of thumb as we learn to use our CX2. And uh, the way I propose to do that is we'll uh, pretend the altimeter setting is 29 or 82. So that's exactly one tenth of an inch lower than, uh, than standard. And so at sea level, the rule of thumb predicts a pressure altitude of 100 feet. Let's find out what the CX2 says. So we turn our CX2 on, comes up in calculator mode. We hit flight to get to the flight menu, and altitude is option number one. And then pressure altitude is option number one. So we're, uh, we're going to pretend that the, uh, the indicated altitude is sea level, in other words, zero. The, the 30 here is just the last value that someone had entered. So we're going to enter zero for sea level. And uh, now we enter the altimeter setting, which is 2, 9, or decimal 8, 2. There we go. We hit enter. And you see that the CX2 says that the correct answer is 93 feet. So remember, the rule of thumb said 100 feet. That's not too bad, but uh, the correct answer is 93 feet. Now to get the, uh, the density altitude, piece of cake, we just uh, go back. Uh, the simplest thing to do here is to use the, uh, the back menu because we're already within the altitude menu. So we just go back to the primary altitude menu and then select number 2, which is density altitude. And you see the CX2 automatically enters the pressure altitude for you. Now, let's uh, say that, uh, just to keep this simple, because we have a rule of thumb here that says if the temperature is one degree different than standard, that will throw your, uh, your density altitude off by 120 feet. So uh, at sea level, the standard temperature is 15. Let's just pretend that it's 16 today, one degree above standard. That should bump this up 120 feet, so that should be about 210 feet. Let's see what we actually get here. So we hit enter for that pressure altitude. Now we're going to enter 16 for the, uh, for the temperature, and well, we actually get 233 feet. Right? So 233 feet, the, the rule of thumb wasn't too far off, uh, but just not quite exactly correct. Nevertheless, these two rules of thumb, they seem to be pretty good. I'm just going to run through a couple of uh, more quick calculations. Usually on, on a typical flight, you'll be doing at least two. You'll do one for your takeoff airport, which you know, could be sea level. But here I have our home airport's uh, elevation. So let's go back to the pressure altitude menu, number one. And this time we enter 1624 and enter. Remember the altimeter setting is already there and the rule of thumb we're expecting according to the rule of thumb it should be 1724. Let's see what we get. Well, not quite. 1717. So that rule of thumb wasn't too far off but that's, we'll put the, the correct answer in here. 1717. And now we'll do the density altitude. So the back button, density altitude, uh, see the pressure altitude is already there, so hit enter. Now, uh, uh, 16 degrees, we, we can go ahead and stick with 16 degrees, but remember um, at uh, Castlegar, 16 degrees is not one degree above standard. It's more like about four degrees above standard. So we're expecting that density altitude to jump up by about 480 feet. Let's see what actually happens when we hit enter. And that's not uh, too bad, but it's off just a little bit. Uh, this then is going to be the more accurate value, 2, 2, 3, 4. And 
as would be uh, typical, you, you would normally need to calculate your pressure altitude and density altitude for takeoff in order to do your takeoff and landing distance calculations. And then you're likely uh, climbing up to some indicated cruise altitude, in this example 8,500. So you're probably going to need to do the calculation again in order to get an accurate uh, cruise speed from your pilot operating handbook. So again, we'll go back to the pressure altitude menu. This time, enter the uh, 8500. But the altimeter setting is already there, so you just have to hit enter. So uh, in this case, of course, not a, a big error, 93 feet per the rule of thumb. Uh, but nevertheless, this is the number that we should be looking up in our POH when we look up our cruise performance. And uh, we might need the density altitude. Depends on, uh, on the type of uh, POH, how yours is set up. Temperature is not likely going to be 16 degrees at uh, 8,500 feet, so we have to look this up in the uh, the upper winds forecast. Let's say on the given day it's one degree at uh, that altitude, and that of course is a bit above standard. So the density altitude 8,949. Oops. 8,949 and we're done.